Welcome to the Landco Podcast, an analytical behind the scenes look into land investing and land ownership, covering marketing conditions, current inventory, and updates on all relevant land ownership issues here in Illinois, mixed in with some timely hunting and fishing reports. All right, guys, welcome to the Landco Podcast. We're here at the Lynch Farm in Fairview, Illinois, Fulton County, and we're here because of this. It's okay if I touch it. Go ahead. <laughs> Glenn shot this on October 29th. Yep. Yep. And uh, we'll get into the hunt in a minute, but it's it's the biggest deer I've ever seen in my life. And what a green score? 213 and 68. So over 200. Just incredible. But mm-hmm. I'll admit that these guys know more about deer hunting than me, so most of this will be these guys. But uh, before we start, take us back. When did you buy this? Three years ago? Uh, close October 2017. Okay. Mm-hmm. So Ryan was working, well, we were both working with these guys. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, we knew what they were looking for. Ryan heard about this farm. So walk them, walk them through that a little bit. Yeah, we just had a client that uh, wanted to list the farm with us. So we got the listing put together. And then uh, I don't even, I don't believe that this farm even made it to the open I, market. I thought you were like this Glenn and Matt, it, this is perfect fit. I, right. I don't know and, if it did. We, we never actually got it onto the open market before right. you know, for anybody else to look at it because when we got a hold of Glenn and Max, this was something that we knew that was in their wheelhouse. So right. they looked at it, and I think there was an accepted offer within a matter of a couple days. Yeah, it was it was quick. It, 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 you know, you, quick, you yeah. came out and took us through, and you know, we looked at it, and I think immediately after we were done, Dad said, we need to go for this place. Yeah. Yeah. And we looked at a few. Right? We did, yeah. But yeah, we this did. One, yeah. This one, uh, you know, it hit the nail on the head. It was exactly what we were looking for. Yeah, which we knew. And looking at it today, it's even more clear. It's like this is it's perfect. But mm-hmm. uh, And we will get into that at some point. There's probably too much to go over on what they've done to the farm since they bought it to now. But we should definitely do that at some point. Um, but let's talk about the hunt. I mean... You guys knew of this deer the year you bought it, right? I mean, you didn't know about it before you bought it, but as soon as you bought it, got cameras out and saw it? Yeah, October, uh, we closed, like I said, early October of 2017. We put cameras up immediately. Um, this deer, as a we estimated him three and a half to four and a half, then showed up middle of October. Which is that, right? Which is this. Actually, we found dad had found this shed. Um, in around, I think it was like late February, early March during shed hunting. Um, it was actually within a hundred yards. The shed was found within a hundred yards of where he killed them, uh, which is really cool actually. Uh, yeah, we knew of this deer since we bought the farm and we just, like I said, we knew he had potential, uh, and we've been following, like I said, ever since we'd never had an encounter nope. until Dad yeah. took him out that night. And Did you guys say you've, you've never actually seen him before? Never. Only on camera. And all, and usually 90% of the time. In fact, we only had a couple camera pictures of him during the daylight hours. Mostly it was a nocturnal deer. And uh, as we said before, it's kind of a bland picture in, for the for the evening, for the nighttime pics on any camera. It's kind of a yeah. kind of a washed out picture. So you can't really get the true color and, and, the, and the true um, uh, looks of the deer. Through the to the nighttime cameras, but um, he was very nocturnal for for a whole long time. But we did get him on some camera pictures later in the season, uh, on in seventeen and in eighteen. Uh, later in the season, you know, after all the all the rut was over with and everything right. else, it started showing up on camera. But I think all the pressure was off of him. You know, then he got a chance to eat. You know, so um, but yeah. Well, that's so, some that's something that you know. Ryan came and helped us out, you know, helped us create a couple new food plots in there, create access to those food plots. Um, and that's, you know, those late season pictures were actually on those new food plots that we started putting in there. That's, you know, this place, we knew we wanted it for hunting, but we also wanted to be able to come out here with family and, you know, through a couple of those, uh, you know, I guess you can say improvements we made to the farm. We've been able to kind of, I guess, follow this deer a lot easier than we originally thought we could. For sure. Know? Yep. Mm-hmm. So how about 2019? <laughs> well, um, we really didn't see him hardly anything. We have, you didn't get many pictures of him mm-hmm. all summer, did you? Mm-hmm. 
No, no. We were actually really worried. You know, EHD has been really bad around Fulton County the last two years. Uh, lots of reports of dead deer, and we had not got one picture of this deer all summer, even through September, early October, nothing. Um, and it wasn't until I think our first picture of him was around the 21st. Mm -hmm. I think it was the, the 20th or 21st. We had a picture of him uh, to the west over here, right on our fence line. He was over there, uh, right along the uh, cornfield over there. And then on the 26th and 27th, we had him in the in that field that I shot him on. Okay. In, so that on was, talk about that. That's that secluded food plot that you guys put in? Yeah, we put in a food plot down the bottoms, which is about the furthest uh, lower field that we have on our property, which is pretty secluded. There's a creek on the back side of it, on the, on the north side of it. Uh, it's probably three quarters of a mile from any, I mean, residents yeah. or any people. So he's, they kind of feel comfortable down there. And uh, they got food, cover, and water. So, um, so he'd been staying down there, and that, that's where I found his shed in 2017 was right on the other side of the creek just about 100 yards from where i shot him so i remember looking at it back in the day we cruised through that food plot and ryan was like this is it this is the spot they're gonna and i think you said they shot another deer mm -hmm. they had before they had years before yep yeah that's nuts so so walk us through the hunt you hunted that ground blind on the what would that be the south side it'd be south on the side? north south on, side. The, on the south side yes south side right of that field. right yep and we uh we got into the stand. Matt hunted the field, our other one of our other food plots, about three or four hundred yards north. I mean, uh, east of me, and uh, I we got in there about three thirty, twenty to four, and uh, a few does came into the field, and a, and a ten point buck came in a little bit later, and and uh, this ten point buck started acting kind of funny, and on the very far north end of the of the field, and he kind of looked over towards the towards the west and he kind of made a couple movements like there was something over there and he knew something yeah he knew something was up so he kind of gave this little strange look over there and 20 seconds later this guy came out of the out of the and you didn't know it was him right away mm, i couldn't i didn't recognize him because all the pictures that we ever had was at nighttime so i had to get my binoculars up and once i looked at him i go oh i think that's uh that's him that's a big boy yeah, that's so a big uh boy. You know, what's crazy is, you know, for a deer that we followed for the last three years to only get, you know, daylight pictures of him, you know, a handful of days out of the entire season. Yeah. I get a text from dad. I'm up in my other blind, you know, on one of our new food plots. It's five o'clock at night. I mean, there's still an hour and a half of shooting light left. And I get a text from dad saying, big boy just entered the field. Pretty crazy to so think, you know, awesome. when we've not laid eyes on him ever in the last three years, <laughs> yeah. all of a sudden he's walking, yeah. you know, in daylight bright as day. I mean, I was shocked. Crazy. So were the, uh, I know we talked about the cutting link cameras before. Were the pictures in the previous days in daylight? Yeah. I mean, big shout out to Cutty link. Like I said, it's a new system that we just put on a few of our farms this year. We, we put it on actually, we've got three different farms. We put them on every one this year. We were not going to pursue this deer this early knowing that, uh, you know, some pictures we got of him earlier, he was walking, it was the middle of the night. We didn't want to put pressure on these areas that, you know, were our better spots, but he checked the camera. It was the 20, I think he checked them on the 27th or the 28th. And it showed the last two nights he'd been in this field where he shot him, uh, during shooting hours. You know, he sends me a text, Matt, big boys in the field. We got to do something. And I said, well, Looking at the conditions, the 29th is the night. If you know he's going to be walking, it's going to be in that field, and it's that's the night we need to go after him. And you know, as luck would have it, it worked out. It worked out. But worked so out. run us through those the cutting link because I think they're awesome, but a lot of people don't know about them yet. Yeah, they're not the cell. It's a cool. Right? You know, it's new. To, it's new to us. It's not a cell camera. And you know, we do have a couple of cell cameras that we run. You know, they have their their place. You know, and they're convenient. The cutting link. What's cool about them is. You have a home camera. It can be used as a camera or just as a, a base. We use it as a base. And basically, every other camera that you put out on the farm links to this home camera. Um, you know, we put it on the front porch, you know, of our cabin there. So, you yeah. know, dad being out here five days a week, you know, he can get up in the morning, walk out on the porch, check the chip. He can see what's been going on, on throughout the entire farm. That's, and that's awesome. you know, how he came to realize 
we need to make a move on this deer a lot earlier than we thought we needed to, yeah. and, you know, now the time. And, you know, had we not had those cameras, we probably would not have, yeah. you know, how'd you been uh, able to go after this. Dad probably wouldn't have got that did deer down. Draw straws to see who got to hunt there or how'd that go? <laughs> I did. I did, honestly. <laughs> Before we before we got out here, I honestly said to Matt, I said, if you want to take the bottom field, <laughs> he, I will I will let you hunt that he, field. You know, kudos to him. He did say that. I said to him, I said, if Big Boy, you know, that's what we named him, is going to be walking tonight, he's going to be in that bottom field, hunt it. Go and hunt. You know, right. Dad, I can't say how excited I've been for him. You know, he's out here busting his butt on this place, you know, four or five days a week every single week for the last three years since we've owned the place if anybody was going to shoot that deer and deserved it that's the guy who deserved to do it i was more than happy to you know like i said i've been more excited about this whole thing than he is you know i yeah. when we walked up on it i you know about had me in tears you know it's not every day you see a 200 plus inch deer out here and all of a sudden you know he's shot one that we've had history on for three years and he's kind of got this blank stare and kind of like he still oh, did the I, next morning. He did. He's like, I can't dirt. believe it. I'm like screaming. I was like, are you kidding me? Look at this thing. <laughs> it's incredible. The next morning, yeah. just to see it and then and measure it with him. And I still didn't think he knew. What you he shot you him. texted me right after you met with yeah. him and said, Matt, that's this pictures don't do this they deer didn't. justice. And no. He's enormous. He's like, I think I'm more excited than your dad is right now. And I said, to be honest, I think he's still a little in shock yeah, as, yeah. as to what's going on here. Well, I just didn't think because, we, in fact, we never had him in any pictures of him in daylight and all of a sudden Boom, at five o'clock in the actually in the middle of the afternoon he pops out and starts walking towards me so i said yeah you know how lucky can that be so so walk us through that so he popped out of the yeah he did he popped out and uh 10 point kind of looks at him and he looks at the 10 point and he kind of just takes a couple steps towards him and he turns around and kind of walks off and just starts walking down the edge of the of the of our food plot and I go, how, how far is the north side? Uh, it's, it's about 140, 150 yards. yards maybe. Yeah. From here? No, from, no, from, from like where he was. Okay, from where he was. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I think I think actually it's about 150 down. Yeah. You know, it's from about 150. So anyway. So you didn't know it was going to happen yet? You thought, no. I thought I'm going to screw this up. I might get <laughs> <talked> already. <laughs> so anyway, and if it wasn't for this doe that had come and was eaten in front of my stand. I don't think he would ever walk down there. I just don't think he would have because he was more interested in that 10 point and probably chasing him out of the field than he was anything else. But as soon as that 10 point turned around and kind of walked off, he just kind of started walking down towards me. And I go, well, this may be good or this may be bad. I'm not for sure which, but <laughs> anyway, here he comes. So, of course, as I told them guys, you know, after about when he got it in about 35 or 40 yards, I started getting really nervous. I said, man, don't screw this up. If you do <laughs> shoot at him, don't screw this up. So he gave me the opportunity to shoot him and I, and, and I shot him and, and, and he ran about 70 yards and that was about it. Man, so, so cool. Yeah. Most, most people, you know, when something like that happens, they're getting their bow ready. They're getting their binoculars up. He's texting me saying, Matt, big boy just into the field. He's taking pictures on his cell phone and sending them to me. I'm like, Oh my gosh! What's which is, what's get which on? Is awesome now. It is. Yeah. It's, it's really cool. Yeah, I've got memories. I've got a picture of him of when he first entered the the field, and he looked right over to the ten point. I said, "Well, take a picture now because he may be." It's so one of those, I took a picture one of, those of those live him. pictures. It's cool where you can see you know you push on it mm -hmm. and it shows him walking, and then he looks over at yeah. that ten point, and kind of pauses, yeah. then keeps. It's cool. Yeah, it's pretty, so anyway, he just walked down there, and that was it. So. But, uh, so then what'd you do? You laid back or you guys knew? No, I, no, I texted him and I said, uh, I think, I, I think big boy's down. So, um, and he, he said, I'll be right there. So, and I got my binoculars up and I looked at him and he was over laying on the ground. Oh, you could see him from Oh yeah, yeah. I could see him What's laying crazy there. Is that makes you feel a he better. texts Matt, Matt texts me and I'm hunting on another farm on the other side of the County. And I'm just wondering what is going on this whole time. <laughs> I, I mean, it's, it's prime time for me. You know, it was 5 30 or something yeah. you know the deer is supposed to be walking out then i'm you know i don't even care i get out of my blind i climb down i'm like i'm going to you know put, oh, put my absolutely. hands on this thing i can't believe it go give dad a hug and see what's going on i come down the hill he's standing above him i've never seen a deer like this in my life on the hoof you know you see him in shows yep. and you see him in magazines pictures video do not do this deer justice you know you lay mm -hmm. your hands on him i mean he is Truly a giant, and I, you know, and I, and I, and I actually told Matt, it's kind of a sad, happy thing, you know. I'm mean, happy I, I killed it, yeah. But I'm and sad said that, that the but I'm sad, over. I'm sad that this, but this big boy is now, yeah, you know, gone between us and the neighbors. I mean, 
four years of pictures, you know, in the chase. I mean, this is a new farm, which, you know, dad, you poured your heart and soul into this place. This is the mm -hmm. biggest deer we've had on the farm, obviously. I mean, our main goal since we've owned this place is yeah. to eventually harvest this deer and mm -hmm. finally get it done. I mean, it's like, what, what tops this? Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, right. he grosses 213, almost 214 inches. He, as a 10 point typical frame, he's over 194 inches. I mean, that's Man. almost unheard of. Yeah. So did you, as you found him, did you know all this? Like had it sunk in or? He didn't know he was big. We knew it was big. I mean, I told him. I, I guess him at 190. We did. When we saw pictures, you know, yeah. that's the thing. His trail cameras can be deceiving. We thought yeah. it was like, oh, he's easy, 190s and everything. And when I walked up on him, that I, just, I keep looking at him. I said, you know, that side there. My dad was like, this thing's going to clear 200, no problem. I mean, this is ridiculous. It just, yeah, you just don't realize it until you get down with him. And see how yep. big and his body was, and see how big his horns were. It's his, it's his mass that puts all that. Next the top morning, when I was measuring it with you, and I started telling you, all right, twenty-one and seven eighths, yeah. whatever six eighths or whatever it was, and I, as I'm throwing these numbers out at him, I'm kind of racking them up in my mind as I'm doing it, and I'm like, holy cow, yeah. this is big. So yeah, gonna be a big boy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, that's one of the things, you know he was the ruler of these farms, you know, in the area. That's why we call them big boy. I mean, because, you know, when you saw him on camera, that's your first race. Like, oh my goodness, that is a big, big deer. So walk us through some of the measurements before we kind of close this out. Because yeah, we talked about the bases. I, mean, I know there's yeah. huge, we don't have them in front of us, but you remember the bases uh, were just yeah. short of eight inches. Yeah, bases were short of eight inches. That's, and you guys, are, all you guys were shot a bunch of big deer. Yeah. That's enormous, right? Eight I mean, I deer. think the, the, the world record um, measurement on a deer's bases are just over 10 inches. Okay. I mean, and I mean, most of the times, you know, you shoot a big deer and you get anything over five inches. And five like, inches hey, is good. Great. Yeah. You know? uh, I think these were seven and six eighths, roughly. Seven, seven and four and seven and six. Yeah. 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 They're huge. Um, G3 on this side's 13. This one's 12 and five eighths. Uh, main beams are 25 inches. Uh, width is 21 and five eighths. Um, brows are eight inches. He's got a big kicker off of this brow here. Um, just, I mean, the mass measurements are, are just, I mean, probably what helped him, you know, get up over 200 yeah. inches is all the mass measurements. And looking, looking at pictures of this deer over the last three years since he's owned it, like I said, with the shed, his frame has been consistent. The, I mean, he's been, exact same. he's been, except for that little kicker on the GT. You know, if he's 25, 21 and a half inches wide now, he's been 21 and a half inches wide the last three years. Oh, really? It's been his mass that has just gone insane yeah. over the last, you know, right. like two seasons. Yeah. Well, didn't yeah. you guys say he'd grown since that, which is two years before, right. 50 some inches? Easy. Total, Easy. total yeah. inches. Total so inches. Would be Easy. 50, 53 inches. Yeah. That's. That's crazy. I mean, you hold this up. I mean, it's almost identical in in everything, but I mean, you can see how much it's grown. I mean, it's unbelievable. I mean, just yeah. just the diameter of each time. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's tripled in size. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. And we thought actually when we found this shed in 2017, when I found it, I didn't even touch it until Matt came over and I said, "Matt, you got to come over and look at this shed." I found. <laughs> and he came over and looked at it, and I didn't even move it. And he says. Oh my gosh! Well, we thought that was a nice shed back in 2017 because we knew it was him. We knew it was him. So, uh, but I mean, it, by seeing this, we knew okay, three and a half, maybe you know, four and a half, mediocre at that point. And that's when you know this in 2018. That's when he made his jump. jump. You know, we saw him yeah. like, oh, that's a 180 inch deer. Anybody would be yeah. incredibly lucky to you know shoot a deer like that. But you know. We didn't have any encounters. We had pictures of him a couple daylight. We had the opportunity to go in for him end of the season. We chose to kind of lay off, mm -hmm. just knowing if we give this deer one more season, we're going to have a crack at a 200 inch plus deer. And yep. we did that. And obviously, you know, patience has paid off and dad yep. was able to close yep. the deal. And, you know, we have the biggest deer between any of us that any of us have ever killed. I mean, this is a deer. Killed or seen. Right. Yeah. It is. Yeah. I mean, it's the deer of many lifetimes. Yeah. But I do have to say we have been putting in more and more food plots every year. Huge difference. Huge, huge difference. Like I, I mean, it all does help. It, it's, out it's, here. A, it's a lot of different things. It's yeah. the food plots. It's the cutting links. Yeah. It is. You're not. Yes, this is a recreational farm. 
but you're not going back into the farm. You're using the way the farm is set up with the lakes and everything. Right. You're able to separate those two areas. Well, yeah. yeah. That's something we were able, you know, Ryan, you know, thank goodness we were able to do that is the way this farm is set up, it's more long than it is wide. And with these new food plots, you know, originally we would have to walk or drive almost a mile down to the end and come back around. And I said, let's get Ryan in here with the Bobcat. Let's create a couple new paths up to these place. You know, we can get to these new places like that. I mean, just piece of cake. And that's where, you know, a lot of these pictures of this deer have been is in these new food plots. And we don't have to walk through the timber, disturb a mm -hmm. lot to get to it's them. It's all about access. It is. Yeah. Entry and exit. Is, yeah. It is. It's Some of these as important as hunting the right wing. Yeah. Right. Some of these things that you think are impossible, like, oh, I'll never be able to, you know, I want to put a plot here, but I'll never be able to get to it without disturbing things. You know, you and take the impossible. impossible out of it, you know, and, you know, think of what do I want? You can make it happen. And that's what we did here. And, and the uh, other thing, too, is, is this was killed on a 150-acre 150 150 farm and not a 1,000-acre farm well, or 2,000 acres no, or, you, don't need you know, that. big tracts of land. This yeah. is on 150 acres. Yeah. Right. And granted, you work very closely with your neighbors. Right. Yeah. You know, but. Uh, but a hundred. what's crazy is it's a 150-acre farm that we are here every single week you know if he's not here during the week i bring my wife and kids out mm -hmm. here on the weekends we ride our gators around here you know we go through right. the trails we fish it's a place where you can come and bring the family enjoy your time and still kill trophy right yeah, yeah. but you've also done it very smart to where you've set it up to where if you're driving the trails and, and going to the different lakes and whatnot you've done it in a manner that it's not disturbing it's all about your planning sanctuaries, and your bedding, yeah. or right. your food sources. It's all strategic. Correct. All of our food plots, all of our big food plots are to the far north Back. of our property yep. and our recreational areas to the south. south. Of so if and we you guys keep don't, I don't know this for sure, but I doubt you're taking your family fishing and middle of october back there no oh no i mean <laughs> no. you know i i can't say you know we've you know if we have people who've never been out here you know we obviously sure. choose our time of day where we you know we drive but we'll drive down you know i've taken people on a tour of the place you know in october you know and they've driven by the plot where dad killed this buck it's yeah. but more, it's noon it is mm -hmm. it's the time of day mm -hmm. it's it's all about planning and where you put things when you do things uh and you know like i said it's, for sure and this is what happened. This is what happened. So, so what do you do next? I mean, do you retire uh, from hunting, or do you? No, I just uh, find another deer. Uh, start praying for for that he bred a lot of does <laughs> in his five and a half years, six and a half years. What did we nickname this deer? What you told me the other day, I was riding with it. Bowling point. Oh, bowling point. My buddy down in <laughs> down in down in Missouri told me that I should call this buck bowling point because it it because it, it takes two hundred twelve. Degrees to boil water. <laughs> and it scored 213. Ah, score two like so. yeah, yeah. I like it. Yeah, so, boiling point. Okay, so. well, cool. Uh, anything else we need to cover that I, we missed? I'm looking forward to the, you know, the vlog. We can talk about just sure. everything that's been done to this place. You know, yeah. it's almost unrecognizable from when we yeah. first got it. And you, as, I mean, at, I mean, as Ryan said before, you don't need a thousand acre plot to do what we've done. We did it in 150 acres, and we've changed the entire look of the whole farm by doing our stuff that we've mm -hmm. done. Orchards, and, yeah, yeah. But it, you know, it's, it's, general it's nothing major. It's all just little simple maintenance to make yeah. it look nicer yeah. and still stay functional. You take, you take the, you take the lot, let's call it the lodge where we're sitting right now. Right. Take that out of the equation. And there wasn't a lot of money spent. It was just a lot of, a lot of hard work yeah. and Man hours. Out. And that was it, and anybody right. can do it. Anybody yeah, can do that. Yeah, it's not, but it's not a, it's not a, it's not a, a, a tremendous amount. Small things equal to be big things after a while. Make so, a big difference. Yeah, yeah, they sure do. Okay, well, cool. Well, thanks for listening, guys. Um, look forward to the vlog that we do on uh, this property to maybe showcase some stuff that we didn't get to talk about. But uh, other than that, we'll wrap it up here. We appreciate you guys listening slash watching, and we'll be uh, back at you shortly with another one.